Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create custom configuration sections within our app.config or web.config file. A custom configuration section will allow you to define your own layout for your config data and then hydrate that into an object model uh, through the system configuration namespace and the, the configuration uh, framework. This is useful because in many scenarios the key value pair of the app settings just doesn't convey the meaning of the data the way we'd need to. So creating config sections is relatively easy, relatively straightforward, and can be done pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to do that. The first thing we're going to need to do is actually implement, or I'm sorry, reference the system.configuration namespace. So let's scroll down here and find system.configuration. We'll bring that in. The next thing we're going to want to do is actually create the data structure that we want to store within our config file. And to save typing and fat finger, and I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And the plugins will have a, the sections will be called plugin, and then we'll have a plugin node. And this, this will be useful uh, later, or meaningful later. And then we've basically defined all of our uh, data points. The attribute plugin name and path you define, and we'll actually set up pointers to that in our classes here in a second. And you can name that anything you want. The next thing we're going to do is actually create our configuration section. This is what tells the system dot, uh, configuration uh, namespace in the configuration engine how to process our data. So we're going to call this plugin config section. I want to make this a public class, and it's going to need to inherit off of the configuration section. Now this only needs to have one piece of data in it, so it's a property, and it needs to return us a plugins collection, which we'll create here in a second. And we're going to just have this return null for now. Now in order for the configuration manager to know how to deal with this, we actually need to sprinkle on an attribute here. the configuration property, and we'll give this a name of plugin. The name here must match the name here. That's how it knows what to find or where to find this data within the config file. So we've gone ahead and created that. So let's go ahead and create our plugins collection class. And because there's a lot of stuff to type here, instead of typing it all during this demo, I'll just copy and paste it in. And you'll notice that I also need a configuration collection attribute on top of my class here. This tells me that I will be looking at a set of this and it will tell me that it will store the data in a collection manner. This plugin element class, I'll be creating that here in a second, and that's actual our data element, and that will map to this here. And then we, we need to inherit it off of the configuration collection element collection in order to be used by the configuration manager. Then we just need to create some simple data access points. This will allow us to iterate over it. This will allow us to grab an element by its key and just create a new element. Well, it looks like the next thing we need to do is go ahead and create our plugin element. So let's go ahead and do that now. And again, because this class actually will contain quite a few lines of code, and you don't want me to type this over and over again, let's go ahead and copy and paste this bad boy in. Let's clean up this code real quick. There we go. So I've got a plugin element, and here's the concrete implementation of plugin element. And you'll see it again inherits off of a class called plugin element. And we need to sprinkle in some attributes. And these attributes are very, very important, and they must be keyed in correctly, otherwise it won't work and you'll get some obscure errors. This plugin name maps directly to this field here. This path again maps to this attribute. So you can see how this plugin element is the is the representation of that data row. It will actually pull in each attribute into a property. And then you can set default values. Is it a key? Is it required? Things like that. Uh, and there's a couple different attributes you can set as well. You can go ahead and look into those if you want. And then basically you're just creating public access, or access points via properties to gather this data. And we've now set up our basis of our structure and how to pull in our data. Let's go back up here real quick and actually implement the return of this. So we actually want to be able to return data. 
we'll call it we'll return a plugin collection and we'll do base plugin this will allow us to return this entire node as a collection structure let's go ahead and save that in but the one thing we need to do now is actually tell the app config how this this data is going to be accessed or by what namespace and by doing that we're or to set that up we just need to create a config section and basically just create a section handler call this name call this plugins this value here maps directly to that value there and type and here we need to give the full namespace and the class name to the to uh, this class here so I'm going to copy the namespace dot plugin config section and then this will be inside the custom custom config demo assembly now we've created our section that will map our our individual classes to our data points and we've set up all the wiring let's go ahead and create a real simple UI test to ensure that we can actually access this data to grab this data out all I really need to do is grab it out of the configuration manager that's part of the .NET framework so let's go ahead and do configuration manager I get section we'll call this plugins this name here again maps to this attribute right here and because we don't want to return it as a standard object or as an object we actually want to cast this so we'll call this plugin configuration section oh that's just config section plugin config section and then I can very easily just do if the section is not equal to null and then I could do something like for each plugin items and I could do something like debug plugin item dot plugin name and I can just iterate over all my data points here let's go ahead and put a breakpoint right here and run this real simple app and see if we wired everything up correctly Well, I didn't, didn't throw an exception. I didn't get a null value back, and I do have two items. So I should be able to iterate over this collection. And I have a plugin name of red and a path of foo text. So this tells me that that actually worked just well, and I set everything up correctly. So we can tell by looking at our code here that we, in order to set up a custom configuration section within your code, you really only need to create two or three classes and set up some values in your config file. Let's review all this stuff real quick. This is your config section. This will tell the configuration manager what class to use to read to read this data in. It will also point it to the section in the code that will contain your data. This data will map to objects within your that we'll define later in a second. And these attributes are mapped to properties within your element class. The first thing you need to do is set up your config section. This is what maps over here in your app.config file and you need to basically give it some basic names, some, some information and this will return you a collection. These, this collection is basically a storage of all your data points and will return you an element. Your element is defined and will actually create pointers to each attribute within your data point and we need to make sure that all of our you know, our text values match up case-wise because if they don't you'll get some runtime errors. 
So I hope you learned something today, and I hope you learned that creating a config, custom config section within your .NET app is relatively easy and relatively straightforward. Hope you learned something. Till next time.